Even though cities like Siena and Florence were incubating a new art that made room for everyday people, the Gothic style was still considered the height of glamorous beauty. So you see, even in Siena, the Republican city, artists like Simone Martini and Lippo Memi making an annunciation like this one and making it full of Gothic style, gold, delicate ornamentation, pointed arches, lots of decorative daintiness. And so there are some changes that are happening in the Gothic. If you look at the figures, they are increasingly naturalistic with the shading, the modeling of light and dark to define form. The bodies are increasingly dimensional with the angel kneeling on a ground plane. And yet there's still this emphasis that is a Gothic emphasis on ornamentation, such as these ornamental patternings and graceful courtly elegance. Mary's gestures and body might seem odd to us, but it is a very, she's made to look like a courtly lady, which can seem odd. This is in Siena. They had gotten rid of their aristocratic overlords, but it's a way of conferring honor on her to make her look queen-like or aristocratic. And the Gothic is the style still the style of royalty. So that Gothic style is evolving and you can see here in these photographs that is it is evolving into amazing feats of ornamental patterning, of decorative elegance that are simply astounding. All of these vaulting systems in which you have these lacy interwoven parts to create a, a kind of a net, a glorious net of form. But I want to compare or to be thinking about Jean Pucelle, the painter who made the hours of Jean d'Evreux, a queen, in 1325, and compare that to what Giotto was doing just a short, a few decades before, a couple of decades before, in the Scrovegni Chapel making with frescoes in 1305, the, these paintings you've studied in depth. So these two scenes here and here are the same scene, the kiss of Judas. But we see that this Gothic style is an entirely different world than Giotto's world. And my point here in the points that I'm contrasting is that those worlds have to do with the social milieu, that's the social environment of the patrons and the viewers. Jean de Vreau is a queen and Gothic elegance remains absolutely inseparable from the, cult, the court culture of the elites, the royals. Whereas Giotto's frescoes we talked about show humble people, and that relates to the growing influence of St. Francis of Assisi. Roussel is an absolute master of artistic invention, just like Giotto, but it's a different kind of invention because it's for a different purpose and patron. So if we're talking about the nature of his invention, for one thing, he's using grisé, the grayscale, all black and white, but he is sort of peppering that with little touches of red or blue here and there. This is a choice that is about a deliberate artistic emphasis. I want to argue that it's about elegance and it's also about a kind of artistic daringness that he's showing off his artistry as art, as sort of um, a kind of inventive way of using materials unexpectedly and delighting the eyes of the patron with something that's extraordinarily different. If you want to see what's extraordinarily diff different, this is the actual size of the book. So up here it says each page three and a half inches by two and a quarter inches. 
it's impossible to understand what that means without this hand being shown here, letting you know that this is remarkably tiny, that it is so tiny that the details of every figure, every letter, every little marginal, marginalia design, all of that is a kind of microscopic, amazing miracle to behold. How could this even be accomplished? This is John Pucell, in a sense, bragging that he can do something that seems impossible to, to complete through his sheer artistry, his technical skill, and his inventiveness. So one of the things you're seeing here is something we haven't seen before. An artist being known and impressing a patron for doing something that is that pushes the edge of the art. We've seen artists be sort of humble servants to their projects, to God, to their patron, and definitely Jean Poussel is a humble servant, but he is actually making his name with his patron, the queen, by t making something that would have dazzled a patron who has every kind of luxury object. For a woman who is drowning in luxury to actually make something special, you have to do something really different, and he has. So the last thing I want to say is about the bodies in Jean Poussel's marvelous tiny little world versus the bodies in Giotto's fresco world. Giotto's bodies are so solid and round. They have heft mass. If you look at Poussel's artwork, he's truly a master of shading. And that's one of the reasons he's using the grisaille is to show how skillfully he can shade form to create the naturalistic illusion of bodies in space. But those bodies are all, or almost all, maybe except for the soldiers, all the important bodies are very elegant and slender. And they all have this position. Look at Jesus has this odd kind of thrusting of the hip this curved position that is exactly like Mary's, well, that's called the Gothic sway. And it is a, something that comes up again and again in Gothic art because it signified at the time the kind of elegant and composed posture that someone would use in the court. The culture of a court is a culture of ostentatious display, because everyone is massively obsessed with hierarchy. And so the Gothic sway is, I'm comparing it here, I'm being kind of joking, but kind of serious, is sort of like this model, a Christian Dior model from the 1950s, who's posing in high fashion elegance, looking at her, looking out to see how she's being looked at. She, is she being sized up as beautiful? That's the mindset of a court culture, where the aristocrats gather together and impress each other jockeying for position. That's expressed in this gothic sway, this, these elegant bodies that are draped in long cloth. Remember, cloth was expensive and was a sign of wealth.